Congratulations! The algorithm has declared us a perfect match. So sit back and relax and enjoy the scenery and my amazing and not at all eye-rolling sense of humor. In Arizona, there are a couple of really big holes in the ground, and they are only about two hours from each other. We are going to visit them from smallest to the largest, starting with the smallest, the meteor crater. Starting in the parking lot, each step of the climb to the rim of the crater is designed to build drama for that final reveal. From the dramatic music that plays over the loudspeakers as you approach the front doors, and pretty well-written stuff too, to the space capsule and display, to the simulator, and then when you finally step outside, you are not disappointed. The crater is approximately three quarters of a mile in diameter. The rim sits 148 feet above the surrounding plain, and the depth of the crater is around 560 feet. Just to give you an idea of how big that is, you could fit 20 football fields with 2 million fans in attendance. The first thing that I became aware of is just how close that meteor came to hitting that museum. Which really begs the question, what did the museum sell tickets to before the crater was there? Pictures and video really don't do this site justice. You really should see it with your own eyes. Did you notice the upturn of the rock around the rim? I can't even fathom the forces that would be required to move rock in this way, which was recently determined to be about 30,000 miles per hour. But even as amazing as this site is, it cannot compare to the vastness of the Grand Canyon. I mean, it really is in the name, it's grand. Compared to the three quarter mile diameter of the crater, from south rim to north rim is from 10 to 18 miles across and over a mile deep. There are many lookouts with sturdy rails to see the view from. Don't be these people. Two people fell to their death in this park last year. I promise the view isn't any better from over there, but I digress. From Mar Point near the Welcome Center, there is a three mile walk along the rim to the Lookout Terrace, every step of the way breathtaking. Beyond all the exploring that can be done around this park, there are three must do items when you are at the Grand Canyon. The first is to watch the sunset over the canyon. The colors of the sunset are a perfect complement to the colors of the canyon. I wanted to be more poetic about that, but I mean, you just gotta see it. For all the activities and busyness of the day so far, when the sun starts setting, the day stops, and you just can't help but stare. But don't stare into the sun. Next, stay where you are after the sunset. Take in the canyon under a starlit sky. Or better yet, on a night with a full moon, catch the moonrise over the canyon and see it in a whole new light. Finally, there is the sunrise. Now, I am not a morning person, there are only two things that can get me up this early. One, a pancake alarm clock that gently wakes you up with the smell of cooking pancakes as it taps you on the shoulder and offers you the fluffy clouds of perfection covered in syrup and melting butter. And the other one's the sunrise over the Grand Canyon. Something about the sun piercing the darkness of the night sky and the newness of the day set your mind to the right place to begin the adventures ahead of you. Thanks for watching. I'm pretty sure if you made it all this way with me, you would certainly want to subscribe and see more from me. I have a lot of adventures coming up and some great guides to help you with all your vacation needs. So subscribe already.